Well, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says its laws did not make it compulsory to transmit the 2023 presidential election result electronically. The electoral body made a position known while responding to a petition that was filed before the presidential election petition court in the FCT by the Action People's Party, that's the APP, challenging the outcome of the 2023 presidential election. However, the APP in its petition had challenged the All Progressive Congress uh, APC candidate, Ashiwa Drew Bola Ahmed Tunubu's victory of the, uh, that's of the 20, the February 25th elections on the grounds that the electoral umpire failed to transmit the result electronically. But INEC, through one of its uh, lawyers, Abubakar Mahmoud, SAN insisted that the presidential elections of 2023 was free, fair, insisting that the Electoral Act does not require the electronic transmission of results. The electoral body also denied the allegation that its officials tampered with the result in order to favor a particular political party uh, or its candidate, and, and, and which was, uh, some people described that there was a situation of uh, excess voting. But then, uh, to make sense of all of this, we have a legal practitioner who joins us, is a former NBA chairman, uh, Dr. Paul Ebiala. Thank you so much for being part of the show. Uh, Dr. Paul Ebiala, if you can hear me, please unmute your device. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you very much, and. Uh... I uh, appreciate your invitation to your station. Yes, please. So let's share your thoughts on this one. You have had uh, the thoughts of INEC. Uh, they're saying that the transmission of result was not, uh, you know, mandatory. The Electronic Act did not mandate that result will be transmitted electronically. And so it, it was more like they had options. However, uh, what do you make of it, especially when, you know, the Beavers and INEC, it, it, was, it was really a big deal. They constantly said results will be transmitted electronically. Uh, there will be real-time, you know, checking of results. And I think that that was the reason why a lot of people went out, you know, to cast their votes. So, but, but what do you make of this uh, recent statement by the umpire? Well, okay, before I comment, I think it is... Uh, uh, to put on record that um, when a matter is before the court, in the legal parlance, we say that that matter is sub judice. And when a matter is sub judice, it means that it is still before the court for trial. And so there is hardly anything much that we can say about such a matter. But uh, that notwithstanding, uh, we could also express our opinion as a uh, as people not challenging what is in the court or not talking about what precisely is in the court. Now, um, answering your question directly, um, well, it is rather unfortunate to hear this from the umpire that um, it is not mandatory to transmit a uh, result uh, electronically. Well, I know that uh, the Electoral Act uh, precisely section 148 of that uh, act empowers the commission, of course, to make regulations, guidelines, or manuals for the purpose of giving effect to the provisions of the act. And it, it, it was on that date that uh, the commission made the, regulu the, uh, the regulations and manuals, of course, that uh, uh, guided the 2023 election. Now, if you look at section 50 down to 55 of uh, that regulation, uh, there is an aspect of it that talks about electronic, uh, ele electronic transmission of uh, results. Now, if you look at section 50 precisely, that talks about uh, election collation, result collation at the uh, polling unit uh, level. At that polling unit level, it is a, there are several responsibilities of the collation officer, or rather the uh, presiding officer. And when uh, a law says shall, shall means, you know, mandatory, something that is mandatory. The law, section 50, uh, 
paragraph 50 of that uh, regulation talks about the registration area. That is the word collection uh, officer shall. The word shall here means that it is mandatory that that must be done. Then it lists quite a number of functions that it must, uh, he must carry out. One of which, which is important to us here, one of which is uh, that electronically transmit or transfer the results directly to the next level of collation as prescribed by the commission. <clears throat> now, the, the, the commission came out to talk to us, even before the election, loud and clear, trying to talk about the integrity of the election or the, uh, the, the expected integrity of the election, uh, the 2020, I mean the 2023 election. And it talks about, it talks about election results being transmitted electronically to, to of course, the uh, IMEC uh, uh, server, server. In fact, like you say, that was the reason why everybody felt that this time around, we are going to have a credible election. We are going to have election or vote that will be counted or that will count. And people came out to exercise their franchise because they believed that uh, their votes will count. That is because the commission had given us the impression, the impression that, of course, results were going to be transmitted electronically. Now, um, and, and that is backed up by, you know, the, the law, the regulation made by the commission itself. At the, at the uh, fully unit level, it is expected that electronically, uh, I mean, uh, uh, results be transmitted electronically. Then at the local government level, it is also expected that at that level, election, if you look at, uh, if you go down to 53, uh, regulation 53, where at the local government level, if it talks about the responsibility of the coalition officer at that level, and several of them, it says shall, several of them, including, of course, uh, the aspect of, it says, electronically transmit or transfer the results direct to the next level, and that is the state level. We are talking about the presidential election now and the National Assembly election. So all of this, if you go down up to 50, at the various levels of uh, coalition, that is exactly what uh, the law says. So to say at this point that um, it is not mandatory that results are to be transferred, were to be transmitted electronically, it is something that is, uh, you know, the little thing of uh, a commission as uh, huge as uh, the, the electoral commission that uh, was the umpire of this entire, you know, uh, election. So, like I say, it is the matter is of judice. I can only look at it on the surface as I am looking at it because these are clear, uh, you know, provisions of the law. And these are not things that uh, one will, uh, at the end of the day, the courts will uh, take their decision after giving their view interpretation to the various sections. But uh, it will not be completely correct to say that um, it is not mandatory that uh, the results should be transmitted electronically. When your regulation has stated so, using the word shall, and apart from that, you have come out to tell the world that elections or rather results are going to be transmitted electronically. But then again, uh, you can also take out the fact that also in that paragraph that you have made reference to that of 50 to 55, um, uh, it talks about the regulation and guidelines for the conduct of the presidential election allows the commission to use alternate means of collision. Uh, that's simple English, like you have, you can use any other means uh, to collate this result. So again, do you think that INEC act uh, contrary to the laws or we probably just have lacunas in our laws? Well, um, if at this point we want to agree with INEC that um, it decided to use the alternative means, then coming to, the t to tell the world that it was going to use or transmit uh, results electronically, then that is defeat of the, of the first order. It means that uh, the commission was deceiving the, the entire country in the first place. Because if you know between the alternative method and the, uh, the electronic transmission of results, you know too well that one of them must be cre more credible. And that was why you came to the world and you were telling the whole world that uh, uh, the results were going to be transmitted electronically. And people jumped at it. People believed that that was going to be the most credible method of uh, transmitting a result. 
So if you use the alternative means or method, and you are now coming to capitalize on that to say that because the law does not mandate you to transmit electronically, that is deceit, the first order. And I don't think, uh, it, uh, I mean, this touches on the integrity of the commission itself, you ask me. Mm, but but do you agree that you know that part of the rules and regulations or the guideline uh, for the commission allows them to use an alternative uh, method to collate results? Well, when you talk about alternative measures, I know uh, method. You see, the, it is not in my care. Uh, it is not as if there was, there is an alternative method. These two methods were to be used simultaneously. And that means, at this level, when it is collated at the local government, sorry, the polling unit level, when results are collated, of course they will be collated in the uh, various forms, EC, uh, E, and so on, depending on the, the particular election. Now, this will be done. At the end of it, it is expected that the results that have been entered in this uh, form, or in these forms, will be transmitted electronically to the other level to the other level of collation. That is the whole. So one was to complement the other. So when you tell me that you had an alternative method of uh, collation of results, and so you can jettison one completely, it is not uh, totally correct. They were to, they were to be complementary uh, to each other. That is to say, at the point where you collate manually, yes, of course, manual collation was necessary and was uh, you know, needed. And so when you do the manual collation, that is the reason why the result is uh, snapped or scanned. It is at that point that it's expected that that is now transmitted. What was done manually is now transmitted electronically to the other end. So I do not see um, any reason why anybody would say that uh, uh, because there is an alternative means of uh, doing that or mode of doing that, then that meant that the electronic uh, transmission was to be jettisoned. That is not uh, correct. Uh, don't you think that uh, the, we should be paying attention to the fact that our laws actually leaves a lot of ambiguity? There are too many gray areas in our rules, uh, guidelines. There are no specifics. And it, it feels like those who are policy formulators or those who make these laws or you know, those who are on the other side of the divide take advantage of all of these lacunas and then they begin to exploit the system. So should, again, we be blaming INEC or should we be looking at the fact that you know, the laws were not very specific as to whether we say it is compulsory that elections or result has to be collated you know, via the beavers, despite what the umpire said. Now, let me, uh, I'll, I'll let you know that uh, there is no law, no law in the entire world that is totally complete. That means that there is no time, even under the, uh, the, the advanced uh, countries, the developed uh, uh, democracies, you cannot expect that a particular document containing the laws of that uh, land will explain everything or provide for everything, uh, totally, I mean, completely everything. No. Look, some of these things are left for interpretation, and that is why the costs are there. So it is not expected that every damn thing that is required must be put in a law. Then you can imagine the size of the law uh, of the Constitution that we'll have or the size of the electoral act that we're going to have. So a lot of other things are left for, you know, interpretation. So if they are not, uh, you cannot actually say that they are deliberate. Uh, you know, they are deliberate. Because if you want to be specific in all, on all items, then of course we will not be able to... Uh, so uh, I think that uh, the law has made sufficient provision. Un unless somebody wants to be, uh, you know, mischievous, to say that... Uh, uh, this uh, law is, I mean, there is a lacuna, and so you capitalize on that lacuna. No, uh, I think uh, this is mischief. It, 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 it will simply be mischief. I mean, uh, uh, there Dr. is no Pauli, law. Dr. Paul Ebiala, are, are we not saying that the fact that we constantly allow everything for interpretation by the court, is, is that not where we, why we are where we are today? Uh, because we over time think that we don't have to include every detail. I and mean, we're people that we have to be very specific. It's like saying uh, messy. Uh, I want to see you. And then I wake up to say, well, I, I didn't show up. So you asked me, uh, why didn't you show up? And I said, well, you were not specific as to when you want me to see me. There was no detail. So the point again is, is it not that we 
I mean, there's no time for all of that. We, we just have to move away. But my concern here is where we are today as a people and as a nation, is it because we have allowed everything to interpretation? And usually the interpretation, um, you know, hasn't yielded any positive result. We understand that you can't, you know, add all of the details, but is it not you know, rather important that we are very detailed, uh, knowing the kind of people that we are, the kind of society it's peculiar to us, that we're very detailed about everything. So on the one hand, the umpire tells us that we're going to have, you know, an elections where result will be transmitted via the beavers. The beavers were really the selling point for the 2023 elections. And then, you know, he fell short of his expectation with all of the conviction, with all of the promises, in the trials that we had, then you're also having the umpire saying it was not mandatory that we transmit the result with the beavers because the guidelines and the laws actually gives us, you know, an alternative. And so we decided to use our discretion. Dr. Paula Biala, we will have this conversation some other time. And uh, thank you so much for being part uh, of the show. I know you want to say something, well, but just less than well, a minute. Thank you very please. much. Uh, yeah, maybe my last, uh, this uh, totally amount to what we say, what we call approbation and reprobation on the part of uh, the commission. Because if you have come out to claim that uh, you are going to give uh, an election that will be almost impeccable, and then at this point, you're coming out to put up, uh, you know, this kind of defense. Then if it's uh, approbation and reprobation, well, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, it will be tested in the court. Uh, the courts are uh, I mean, we, uh, rather, they, they, yes, they, they, all of these uh, the, uh, matters are before the court. And at the end of the day, we'll hear the various interpretations that will thank, be given. Thank you so uh, much. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, please. Uh, Dr. Paul Ebiala is a former MBA chairman, uh, Crossover State. He's also a legal practitioner and an academic director. We do appreciate your time. And that's the size of our conversation this morning on the show. We take a break to join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Please stay with us. Now, if you missed out on any part of the conversation from 7 o'clock up until now, we ask that you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel to be part of the show. Uh, we're at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Bopo. Have a great morning.